Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the Brighton career mode and last time out we had some interesting results. We played some of the Premier League's big boys. We played Liverpool, Newcastle and we played Manchester City and we came away with three points from those fixtures so not too shabby but this time around in this episode we've got much more favourable fixtures so I'm hoping we can get a couple of runs uh, get a couple of wins and can kind of get some momentum going. We, I feel like this season so far has been such stop, such stop start for us, just not really getting anything going in the right direction. So hopefully this episode is the one to change it. So make sure you guys subscribe to hopefully help us get that positive momentum going forward in the Premier League. But let's jump into this first game, which is going to be against Aston Villa. So we're away from home in the alternate strip. So you know what that means? We're probably going to put in a good performance because that's literally how things have just been going for us this season so far. Uh, we've just been terrible at home at the Amex, but but pretty decent away from home as we give the ball away early here. And we nearly go behind early on. Just poor play trying to switch the ball uh, when it wasn't really on uh, and the execution wasn't very good. But yeah, Aston Villa looking like their game for a tough, tough game early on here. Oh, Neil Mopey. What a ball over the top. I think that was Riando Trossard. Neil Mopey makes no mistake. What a ball. I think it was Leandro Trossard, but we'll double check. That through ball was exquisite. Playing on the counter-attack, that's what we love to do away from home. Neil Mope. Look at this. Look at this touch. And their control on his left foot as well. His weaker foot. Tyro Mings, no chance. And he goes past Emi Martinez. And that is his fifth goal. How have they scored that? How is Robert Sanchez letting that go in? That Danny Ings. What was this cross and what was the header? John McGinn with his right foot. Look how far away he is from the goal. What is Robert Sanchez doing? He's been so good for us this season and now he's letting in goals like that. But guys, you know what we love to say. Yet again, not another clean sheet and we're only 12, what, 12 minutes into this game. Oh. What's happened to this Danny Ings? Has he become like prime Ronaldo or something? He's scoring headers from miles out, smashing strikes in the top corner. We did give the ball away a bit before that, which was our fault, but not to concede a goal like that. That is ridiculous. God damn it. How did they crop? They broke away and it was what? Four on one, basically. I thought we did enough to get there, but not obviously not. And it falls to bloody Mitrovic. Ah, uh, 3-1 behind. What's going on? We're supposed to be good away from home. We even took the lead. What's happened here? Oh, no. They're on the break here. And this Aston Villa team have been the most and probably one of the most annoying teams to play this season. I don't know. They're just... I've just really struggled to break them down. They kind of press well, but without kind of over committing. And defensively, they're pretty solid. And so that's why we haven't really been able to make too many chances, even though we've been playing well away from home. Although Connolly, Connolly can't, Connolly can't do anything to save his life. I actually think Connolly might might be one of the first players we look to try and offload in January. Let me know if you agree with me, because he can't look like he can do anything to save his life. But there's an away defeat, yet another defeat. And, you know, we saved ourselves a little bit with that good performance against City, a win against Liverpool. But we kind of slumped back into the defeats now. That's two straight defeats on the bounce. And so the next game against Leeds is going to be a very tough one. But it's super, super important that we get three points in it. So we go again to break the Amex curse, this time against Leeds United, a team that will come out and they'll press us. So we will get, hopefully, uh, some opportunities to break in behind. No! Oh, Robert Sanchez! Oh, my God! Even Robert Sanchez couldn't keep that out. And that is your boy, Patrick Bamford. Scoring at the Amex, come on. Look, I even read the run, I came across. Oh. Patrick Bamford definitely should have scored that first shot. But this game definitely isn't over. The way Leeds play with the high press, there's always going to be space in behind. Uh, so we just got to make the most of it. We just got to find out how we can uh, exploit it. We haven't been able to at the beginning of this game, but that doesn't mean we won't be able to uh, as the game wears on. No. How did that ball make its way through? I was literally stopping that pass the entire time. Is that Rafinha? I literally spoke too soon. Look at this. I track the run, track the run. 
Let him go just ever so slightly. And the ball was through. Oh my god. 2-0 down. The Amex curse continues. Oh, Danny Welbeck. Finish that. No, Danny Welbeck. I finessed it. I shouldn't have finessed it. But that is terrible. I don't know why you're talking to Connolly, mate. We're going to bring him on anyway. Uh, maybe it's something a little bit different. But Danny Welbeck's got to score that. Come on. Oh, we can't make it through to Neil Mope. Oh, we need some pace in this team so badly. We need someone up front with Neil Mope. Neil Mope can finish, but he just hasn't got pace. And so we struggle and... Oh! We struggle like that. Patrick Bamford makes us pay three goals. We can see three goals at home to a bang average Leeds team. This was supposed to be the episode where we got some wins going. Not where we were supposed to lose two in a row. Oh, my days. Neil Mope. Come on. We get one back. And it is Connolly. Even then, he couldn't miss. Connolly surely couldn't miss even from there with an open goal. Don't know why he's running off celebrating. We've set up a ridiculously grandstand finish here at the end of the game. With about 15 minutes, just over 15 minutes to go. And two goals to try and get now. Our work's cut out, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Neil Mope. Come on, makes it 3-2 with just probably about 10 seconds left to play. Looks like it's going to be too little too late. Maybe this was the, maybe this is what the game, sh game plan should have been all along. Just go out attacking, get at this Leeds team. But maybe I was a bit too cautious. Oh, we're going to lose this one, aren't we? We've left it, we've left too little too late at the end here. As Eve Basuma rolls in. Nah, the game's done. Free kicks given to Leeds. Oh, no. It's done. It's done. It's done. Ah, oh, we fought valiantly to come back come back into the game. Make it exciting for the last minute or so, but just not good enough again. We conceded too many of those types of chances, and, and they scored. Patrick Bamford had some good chances, but yeah, I think maybe we probably should have gone a bit more attacking earlier in the game, and I think that might have helped us out get a few goals, but... We're made to pay and it's back-to-back -back defeats against two teams that we definitely had a shout at beating. We were in the game at least, I think, for both of them. Um, but what you gonna do? And so for the final game of this episode, we're at the home of Bubbles. We're at West Ham facing what looks like a little bit of a tired West Ham team going into the game. And we see the Bubbles lingering on the screen way longer than I would have expected them to. But it's an away game. So, you know, our chances of winning increase by like 100%. Um, which is always a plus. So hopefully we can get three points because this episode has been a bit shocking otherwise. Oh, Neil Mope, early chance. Oh, he's put it wide. Neil Mope. Oh, what a chance early on. Three minutes in. And we could have been 1-0 up. This game's been about as exciting as you could expect a Brighton-West Ham game to be. It's been absolutely terrible. Other than that chance at the beginning of the game... Both teams have pretty much just cancelled each other out. Uh, unless something crazy happens here at the end of the game. Uh, this is going to be a stalemate. And there it is. Nil-nil. Literally, as I said, both teams just cancelled each other out. It was a pretty poor performance from both sides. Apart from that Neil Murphy chance that you guys saw. Didn't really create anything. And uh, yeah, that comes down to Trossard, Murphy, Welbeck. Just not, not coming up with the goods, unfortunately. But uh, I honestly can't wait to get to January because we really need some reinforcements if we're going to save the season in any way. Uh, and so make sure you leave your suggestions down below as to who you think maybe we should buy to add to the squad in uh, January because we definitely need reinforcements. But uh, let's see what the table looks like after that poor run of games for us. And with those poor performances, we've dropped back down into the relegation zone. We've been flirting around with this relegation zone for so long now. 14 games in and only 11 points. That is, that's just terrible, guys. That is just actually terrible. You know, Watford ahead of us, Norwich ahead of us, Burnley, Bre Brentford and Southampton, strangely, are the only teams beneath us. Um, and I don't really know what to say, guys. Like, we just can't catch a break at the moment. We get one good result and then a couple of things go against us. And I don't really know, man. Look at that. Three wins, two draws and nine defeats. That's just... 
just not very good, is it? Thank you guys for watching anyway. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I feel like I'm getting back into the groove of a bit of FIFA of career mode. I haven't been post for a while, so I felt like I'm a bit out of the groove with a career mode stuff. So hopefully now you'll see the quality of the videos improve, the quality of my commentary improve, and hopefully the quality of my gameplay improve as well. But uh, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and to subscribe to KP Games if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.